So today we are going to take a look at three new AHP modules from Tiptop Audio, new-ish. These are the Echoes, Z5000 and the Zverb. So these are all stereo effects units, mono input, stereo output effects units for your Eurorack system. So Echoes in this patch is doing this this echo sound, this stereo echo, ping pong. We just have a small mix here. Then the Z5000 is doing some chorus. So if I take the mix down, you can hear the difference. So this is my chord sound. And then we're going to give some chorus there. And then finally we have the Z verb which is doing some reverb on these drums. So each one of the modules has a time knob, a filter and a mod slash feedback knob. So this is dependent on which algorithm we're on, what type of filter and what type of mod slash feedback. So each one has three banks of eight effects. There is a little bit of crossover with the Z5000 covering some echoes and some reverbs, but they all sound very good. They're built up from newly developed algorithms and also effects from the ZDSP line. So one of the most interesting features of the ZDSP platform is that you could actually clock the internal chip with an external clock from your Eurorack system. Now we don't have the ability to externally clock the chip here, but what we do have is this fidelity knob, and fidelity is the rate at which the internal clock, analog clock, is clocking the chip. These fidelity knobs are going to slow down the internal clock, so this is the rate of the internal clock. So that's why you'd hear that pitch drop when we slow down the clock. With delays and things, it will actually extend the time of the delay however it will also um, change the filter frequency and also the LFO speed so it'll slow everything down so it'll slow down how the module is actually clocking itself internally and if we go all the way down we can get into kind of really kind of almost like bit crushy kind of territory and end up in a completely different place than what we started with. Now we have CV inputs for the mod or feedback, depending on which module we're on. We also have a CV input for the filter. We also then have this switchable CV input. So this can either be to the time or the time or the fidelity. Now none of these modules has a clock input, which is a little bit of a shame I'd say, because it would have been nice to clock some of these delays. But as they're coming in at the lower end of the price scale, you can understand why there's some limitations here. But let's go through some patches. I'm not going to go through every single effect because we have three banks of eight per module. So that would be like 70, over 70 different effects to go through. So we're not going to go through every one, but we'll just go through and you can hopefully hear kind of the quality of some of these effects. So first of all, let's just use the Zverb to demonstrate how we navigate the device and we'll go through some of the different reverbs. So Zverb is divided into three different banks, obviously, and these are arranged in 70s, 80s and 90s. So we have this kind of chord thing and to change which algorithm we're on, we just hit the number, the, the bank that's lit up. So we're currently in the 70s bank and then we just go through the different programs here. So I think this is a tape into a plate.
the filter and the mod kind of change depending on which program we're on. And if we want to kind of check which program we're on, this is easily done by just hitting one of the unlit buttons and then we can see a sequence of red or yellow depending on which algorithm we're on. It would have been nice maybe if we could go up and down the programs, we can't, the algorithms, we can't actually do that. You just have to go through all the ones to go back to the one that you wanted to get onto. So to switch bank, it's very easy, we just hold the bank that we want to go to. So yeah, you can see that there's plenty of sound possibilities here and plenty of different kind of reverbs. So let's have a look at this patch. We have the drums coming through the Z5000. And at the moment we've got this flanger on. So this is one of the modulated delays. Sounds quite nice when we reduce the fidelity here. And then on the, the two voices that we have going on, we have, first of all, this kind of bass line melody thing. That's coming through the 90s reverb, so we can switch those. And then finally we have this and a chord voice coming through the digital echoes. But again, feedback all the way up. It never really gets out of hand.
So let's have a look at this patch. We have this shimmer reverb on this chord. So that's on the Z5000 here, so we can listen to some of that. Low pass filter here. This shimmer sounds lovely. It sounds very high quality. So on the Z verb we have the 80s gated reverb, so we have some drums going through that. Which is the Nord drum just over here. And I can actually mix in some of the other the chord into that voice as well. This is internal modulation, low pass filter. Just a little bit, touch of that, just to kind of space things out a bit. Bring back in that shimmer. We also have one more voice, which is like a bass line, which is just going to come through here as well. Now, the last thing that we have is this funny little delay effect where we're modulating the fidelity or time with this sequence from stages over here. So we can mix that in with the other drum track and we can just kind of throw a bit of that into there to get kind of effects. We're doing fidelity at the moment, but we can switch to time modulation. But if I start to wind the feedback all the way up, you'll start to hear this little kind of voice pop out. And essentially what we're doing is kind of couple of strong synthesis. So you're tuning a delay line which is a bit of a pain in the ass to tune, but you can get it right and it will stick there. And then as we're in the three tape head mode, we can use this filter to blend between the tape heads and also the bandpass filter. Now currently I don't have anything going through this voice but I can actually put one of the voices in and it almost kind of side chains on the voice in some kind of weird way as you can hear there change it to the bass line you might be able to hear that a bit better As I said before, we don't have um, a clock input, which is a bit of a shame. Would have been nice to clock these delays, but we don't have the ability to do that. However, one thing I've noticed is when you wind the feedback up, feedback is very tame. It doesn't kind of build up and up and up and go kind of insane. It is slightly different per algorithm, but as a general rule, it never really gets really out of hand. So that could either be seen as a negative or a positive, depending on your, I suppose, preference, really. So there's a lot to like with all of these effects. And the main selling point, in my opinion, is just the quality of the algorithms. The reverbs and stuff just sound wonderful. They have a real kind of quality to them, which you don't find in some other kind of smaller effects units. I do think there's a couple of things that are lacking on them you know stereo input would have been nice also lack of clock input now on the delays that just would have really made a difference to getting them in time with your music 
you know it can be done obviously but it just means tuning them in and that can take a little bit longer if you're kind of in the middle of a live set now i think they could solve that problem by you know when you go on to a delay algorithm you could have a tap tempo on one of these unlit buttons that could be a way of of solving that issue and they're fairly you know well priced i think they're between 180 185 you can pick them up for pounds that is so you know they're they're not the most expensive thing but they are still fairly affordable one feature that i do really like is this fidelity knob i think this is a really unique feature that does allow some really interesting effects to happen and as a kind of performative feature if you're playing live with these it'd be very easy to use this in a kind of breakdown scenario where you able to use this fidelity to break down your effects into kind of some glorious noise so if you are looking for some effect units for your Eurorack then I think you couldn't really go wrong with any three but I do have to say I think the Z5000 makes the most sense if you're looking for something that's a bit more of an all-rounder the fact that it does cover some of the reverbs and the delays that you get in the echoes and the Z verb does mean that having all three units in one system wouldn't really make much sense in my opinion I think also if you're going to go for a dedicated delay unit then you'd want the clock input there's also no spring reverb on the Z verb either which is one that I think you know they could have added there the units don't currently seem to be like they're going to be like updated with more algorithms and stuff there is a micro sd card on the back so i suppose the potential is there but it's not something that tips of audio are known for so just bear that in mind um, but i hope you've enjoyed that review and uh, thank you very much for watching